Hello. We're going to look at a polynomial inequality from the perspective of three possible methods we can use for solving it. And here's the first one right here. We're going to be looking at x squared minus 6x minus 15 is greater than or equal to x minus 7. We're going to talk about what this really means on its surface and how we're going to solve the inequality. OK, all of those things from three perspectives. So here's the first one. What this problem is really saying is this. That y equals x squared minus 6x minus 15 is above or on, is above or intersecting with y equals x minus 7. So here's the graph. I already made it and labeled it. The blue, the blue parabola is the graph of x squared minus 6x minus 15. And the red line is the graph of y equals x minus 7. And what this is saying is that the blue line is on or above the red line. That is the blue parabola is on or above the red line where? Right, where on the X axis is this happening? That's what we have to find out. Well, I can look at this. OK, and I can draw a little dashed line from this this point of intersection. And this point of intersection. And say, well, I mean, obviously this part of the blue graph is above the red graph and this part of the blue graph is above the red graph and these points are actually on the red line. So we must be talking about this part of the graph and this part of the graph. And notice that this part of the parabola keeps tilting out to the left forever and will eventually get to negative infinity. And this part of the graph is tilting out to the right and will eventually get to positive infinity. So probably the part of the x-axis we're talking about is from negative infinity into the x-coordinate of that point, and then from the x-coordinate of this point out to positive infinity. And it kind of looks like, but I can't prove it yet, it looks like that could be negative one on the x-axis, and this could be positive eight on the x-axis, but I don't know, that's a little more doubtful. We would need a better graph to, to kind of decide on that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use something called the intersect function and our graphing calculators, our TI-83s or 84s, and we're going to find out what these points are so that we will know for sure. Right now, here's what we know. 
we know that this interval will be negative infinity to something that looks like negative one with a bracket because you have the equals to bar underneath. That means that we're talking about the point of intersection also, but we're only interested in the X coordinate of that. And then a point that looks like it could be eight on the X axis. Out to positive infinity. OK, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get our graphing calculator and we're going to let Y1 equal X squared minus 6X minus 15 and Y2 equal X minus 7. Let me get the graphing calculator. And I've already put them in, sly person that I am. Let me move the cursor over to the end here. There. Or I could even move it down so it's out of the way. Y1 is X squared minus 6X minus 15, and Y2 is X minus 7. And I'm going to graph those two. And there we are. This is on our standard screen uh, from negative 10 to positive 10 and negative 10 to positive 10. And this was a more condensed graph so that you could see where the graph bottoms out and that indeed it is a parabola. But now I am more interested in the points of intersection, that's what we're trying to find. OK, so. Let us go about the following. I am going to use the intersect function to find out what this point is and what this point is. And here's how you do it. You push the second key and the trace key, because above the trace, you've got calc. So to get the calculate menu, I need second trace. And I'm going to choose five, which is intersect. Now, I am being asked, is the cursor on Y1. Well, I have to find out where the cursor is actually. So, where's the cursor? Oh, well, I can't really see where it is. There it is. All right. This is the first uh, this is our Y1. This was the first uh, function that we put in our grapher. And now here is the cursor. It was hiding. Sometimes you have to find it. And all right, what this is asking me is, is the cursor on the first graph and uh, on the first function Y1? And yes, it is. I agree. So I hit enter. Now the cursor jumps to the second graph. I can move this so you can see it a little better. It is on, indeed it's on Y2, which is X minus seven. So I hit enter. Now guess, what guess actually means is this. Move your cursor with only the left or the right keys, okay? Here's what happens if I Click on the right key, OK. I get as close to the point of intersection as I can. That's called guessing. And then I hit enter. 
and it tells me what these points are. This is the point 8, 1, which means that the x coordinate at this point of intersection is 8, which is what I thought it was. So let's be sure to write that down before I go on, because we have to find the other point of intersection also. Here we are. This is indeed 8. It looked like 8 and it is 8, but you can never really be sure. Now I'm going to find this point of intersection by starting again from the beginning. Here's George. He wants to get in my lap. Come on, Georgie, say hi to the people. There you go. Okay. Yes, time to snuggle mom. Now I have to get my mind back on this. All right, now I want to find this point of intersection. So I'm going to start all over again. Second, calc, y1, y2, and then move it to the po other point of intersection. So, second, calc, five. Now, is this on Y1? Well, it's on Y1 and Y2 simultaneously, and so that's not gonna do anything for me. Remember, you can just only use the left and the right cursor keys. So if I move my left key a little bit, see? Now the cursor is definitely on Y1. So I'm going to hit enter. Enter means yes. Now I can see that the cursor is definitely on Y2, but let me move it a little bit just to make it very clear that it is. You can do that if you want to. Enter. Now, it's telling me to guess. Okay, I am going to use this left directional key to move the cursor along the red line to the second point of intersection. And once I'm, I'm close enough, I don't have to be exactly on it, I hit enter. And it tells me, oh yeah, you're on negative one, negative eight. That's negative one, negative eight. I don't care about the negative eight. I care about what X equals because our concern in finding these intervals is where on the X axis is the blue graph above or on the red graph. Okay, so. Yes, did I hit enter? Well, I'm gonna hit enter again. Oh, no, I don't have to because it did give me that. Now I know that indeed this was negative one. And so this is the solution of my inequality. And that's the right answer. So using the intersect method means you have to use it starting from the beginning, second calc five for each point of intersection. Because you're looking for the X coordinate, not both. You're looking for the X coordinate so you know for sure and you're not guessing what this point is and what that point is so you can write the intervals that you see are true. Okay, that's method one. Now we move to method two. This is method two. We are now going to algebraically manipulate this polynomial inequality. And then we're going to put it in the graphing calculator. OK. So pretend you don't know the answers. Watch what I do. The first thing I'm going to do. <clears throat> is. 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 Is.
is remember that what I'm trying to do is find the x-intercepts, the zeros, the real zeros, and they make the x-intercepts. So to find the zeros, let me go back to black. To find the zeros, I do this, x squared minus 6x minus 15 is greater than or equal to, no it's not, this is what I want to do, equals x minus 7. And then I subtract x from both sides, that's 1x. And I add 7 to both sides of the equation. So that I get x squared minus 7x minus 8. Now from here, quite honestly, it is so easy just to factor and get the answers. But we're going to wait to do that, and right now we're going to put this in the graphing calculator. Notice I'm not going to be graphing two different polynomials, a quadratic polynomial and a linear polynomial. Now this time, I did it last time. This time, I'm going to clear and clear and come back up here and I am going to graph x squared minus 6x minus 15. No, I'm not. x squared minus 7x minus 8. Very dangerous, okay? You don't want to um, choose the wrong one, so do something like circle it. There you go. X squared minus seven X minus eight. X squared minus seven X minus eight. And we're gonna graph this. All right, just looking at this graph, you can see what the x-intercepts are, negative one and positive eight. So let's go back here and look at what's being asked now. We need to find the x-intercepts. Well, there is a way to be absolutely certain about that and that's to find the zeros. Let's find the zeros on the graphing calculator. So I'm going to go second, trace, that gives me the calculate menu, and I'm going to come down to number two, which is zero. But what it means is a zero. Now let me show you what these mean. We're looking for a left bound. I always start at the left x-intercept. And then a left bound means you come out to the left and up to the graph. And that is going to be where my left bound is going to be. I go to the x-intercept, I can see I go to the left, one, two, however many places, and then I go to the graph, and that's going to be my left bound. It's not always up. So I have to go to a left bound. Now that's about where I want my left bound to be. 
What's important is that this is the part of the graph that matches up with a point on the x-axis to the left of the intercept. Okay, now I'm going to say yes. Now it's asking for a right bound. Right bound? Well, I have to go to a right bound. A right bound is what I get when I start at the x-intercept I'm trying to find, and I go to the right, and I go down. And I would say it's going to be about there. So I move my cursor to that point using the right arrow key. Okay, and then I hit enter. And now I know this is right because the x-intercept I'm trying to find is between these two lines. So when it asks me to guess, all I have to do is try to get close to the intercept itself. I'll go back to the left. Yeah, I it won't be exact, but that, that's pretty good. I hit enter. And I find out that that point is negative one, zero. So. Um, x-intercept 1, which is really 0, 1, Z the first 0. Okay, the x-intercept is negative 1, 0, and the first 0 is negative 1. OK, now we're going to do the same exact process. For the second X intercept. And you can guess that it's eight. It sure looks like it's going to be eight. It better be eight because we have to get the same answers that we got the first time. OK, so I need to. Go oh, second, trace, two. Left bound, well this is pretty far over to be a left bound. I'm going to move my cursor to, all right, here's my second X intercept. I'm going to go to the right, to the left on the X axis and then go down to the graph or wherever the graph is. So I would say about there is where I want the cursor to be for my left bound. So I'm going to hit the right arrow key because this is to the right of where the cursor is right now. Now it's going to drop out of sight for a minute. Just keep going, have faith. That's a good one. That's a good left bound. Um, and I'm going to say enter. And there's my line. OK, now it doesn't have to be exactly one unit. But it just is convenient, isn't it? All right, so here's the second Y intercept. I mean X intercept. And I'm going to go to the right one because look, it's looking for a right bound. I'm going to go over to the right and then up. So this is where I'm going to put my um, my right bound. So I'll move the cursor there. Yeah, yeah that's good enough. OK, and I'll hit enter. And now I know I'm right because my X intercept is between the left bound and the right bound. 
and we're going to squish it is what we're really doing here. We're going to squish it between these two lines and um, what the calculator calls that is guess. So we're going to move the cursor as close as we can get it to the x-intercept and that's good enough. I hit enter. And there it is, there is our second x-intercept, it's eight, zero, which means our second zero is eight. So x-intercept two, is eight zero, and our zero, our second zero, is eight. Almost said two. That would have been easy, wouldn't it? No, it's eight. So what does that mean for me? Well, here's what it means. It means if I go back to y equals and I just graph this, And I look back here. This is asking for where is the parabola? Well, I, I would have to go up here, wouldn't I? Where is the parabola x squared minus 7x minus 8 above or on the x-axis? Zero is y equals zero, which is the x-axis. So, I now know for sure that at negative one on the x-axis and at eight on the x-axis, the graph is on the x-axis. And from negative infinity out here into negative one, this graph is above the x-axis and from eight to positive infinity, this graph is above the x-axis. So if I actually take a picture of this, and I love this, the snipping tool, which has already changed actually to a, a much fancier tool. If I put this here, excuse me, cat, control V, my left hand was being held captive. I now know that from negative infinity out here to negative one, the graph is on or above the x-axis and from eight out to positive infinity, the graph is above the x-axis. And I should have done that. I should have done this also, me and my wavy lines. Not intentional, I assure you. Um, I now have as a solution to this, negative infinity to negative one with a bracket, unioned up bracket eight to positive infinity. But that's also the solution to this because that is the solution I got back here. So what I did when I moved those over is I just got an equivalent inequality. Notice I didn't have to worry about turning the signs around because I didn't multiply or divide by a negative number. All I did was add or subtract to move these terms over. So 
So there you go. And this is just from uh, uh, using the graphing calculator. And this time we didn't use the intersect function. We used the zero function. Graphing calculator, and I should put this in parentheses, the zero function. Now, thank goodness we got the same answer. Now we're going to move on to method three, which is a method that uses the traditional method used since the dark ages. Yeah, or maybe a little later. Maybe the middle, middle ages. And that's to do this totally by hand. Not having a graphing calculator. Can you imagine living in a world like that? No graphing calculator. I was raised in a world without a graphing calculator, and I promise you life is better with a graphing calculator. Don't let anybody tell you differently. OK, here we go. Step one. I'm looking for the zeros. So x squared minus 6x minus 15 equals x minus 7. This is a quadratic equation now. I need to set it equal to zero to solve. So I'm going to subtract X from both sides. And add seven to both sides. That'll be zero plus zero, which will be zero. I really believe that. This will be x squared. That's minus 1x, so minus 6x and then minus another 1x is going to be minus 7x. And then negative 15 plus 7 is negative, same as minus 8. So x squared minus 7x minus 8 equals zero. You can use the quadratic formula now, or you can use factoring. I would opt for factoring because it takes less time, especially when there's a one in front of the leading term, because you can do the, the shorter, easier form of grouping. If it's, if it's factorable. And we have to find out so, negative 8 is going to equal, well, negative 8 times positive 1. And this is one of those rare occasions where we find our answer right away. Negative 8 plus positive 1 is negative 7, which is our B number. So, bingo! Um, minus eight plus one. Now I set each factor equal to zero because x squared minus seven x minus eight is set equal to zero now. X minus eight equals zero. X plus one equals zero. Plus eight plus eight. x equals positive 8, minus 1, minus 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, 
So we have X on the left, we have negative one on the right. So we now have the two zeros of the function. Z1 is negative one. Let's do left to right. And Z2 is eight, which means that intercept X intercept one, we've been through this before, is negative one zero in parentheses because it's a point, an ordered pair. And X intercept two, suppose I should put a little one and a little two, is going to be eight zero. Now remember, I, I do know, back in the Middle Ages, I would have known that since the leading quadratic term is positive, I'm going to have a cupped up parabola. So what I've just found out is that this cupped up parabola has the following zeros, negative one and positive eight. Now, in the Middle Ages, I would have known that a parabola comes down and goes back up. We don't have to find the vertex here. And so, yeah, OK, I would know I would be able to solve this at that point. But let's assume that back then in the Middle Ages, you guys are students. Imagine that. So you might not know everything that your professor knows. So we're going to have to use the old fashioned Middle Ages method. And here it is, we have to make a table. First row is intervals. Okay, well, our intervals are going to be from negative infinity to negative one. Maybe you're just beginning students. Pretty scary idea, huh? To have beginning be college algebra. Negative one to eight is our next interval. And then the third interval is eight to infinity. These two um, x-intercepts divide up the x-axis into three intervals, and here they are. There now. Next, I need to find a test point in each interval. Can't be on the edges, has to be inside. So negative one, I could make that negative five, couldn't I? And zero, that'd be over here, let's do that. Zero is between negative one and eight, and zero is always the easiest test point. Let's put the zero down here. And then we could have 10. We could have 10 be a test point out here. Did I do that? Can I get it back? Yes. OK. And now this, these, I want to be able to mark these as test points. That was going to be, but now it's not anymore because zero is going to be a test point whenever I can, whenever it's not on the edge of an interval. The edge of an interval is called an end point, and your test point cannot be an end point. Okay. So now I have to list my test points. All right, uh, negative five would be in here, and zero is in here, and 10 is in here. 
And now I have to test the test points and see what sign, positive or negative, that I end up with. We already know just from looking at the picture. But again, we're assuming that as students back in the Middle Ages, you don't know as much as your professor knows. So we're going to go through the whole test. Our function can't. Our function For those of you thinking, well, why don't you just dump the cat on the floor? I've tried repeatedly and he just jumps back on. And when I'm making a video, it's pretty darn inconvenient to be at war with one of my cats. So I just let the cat win. X squared minus 7X minus 8 is what we have now. So X squared minus 7x minus 8. And now I'm going to evaluate the function for each one of my test points. So I'll have f of negative 5, f of 0, and f of 10. Those these numbers, negative 5, 0, and 10, are not required. They're just the ones I chose. You could choose different test points and still get the same answers, provided those test points are not endpoints. Okay, let's work. Negative 5 squared minus 7 times negative 5 minus 8. And zero squared, there's not really any such thing, but bear with me. Minus seven times zero, minus eight. And 10 squared, minus seven times 10, minus eight. Okay, we're ready. This will be 25 plus 35, minus Eight. You can already tell that's going to be a positive number, can't you? I mean, regardless of, of what you've got here, and what you do have here is 60 minus 8, which will be 52, positive 52, that's the important part. So we come over here, and underneath negative 5, I put a plus. Now, here. We just think of these as being zero. You'll have a negative eight answer. <clears throat> negative eight. So a negative sign goes under the zero. And now for 10, <clears throat> you're going to have 100 minus 70 minus eight. 100 minus 70 is 30. Minus 8 is 22. Positive 22. So a plus goes underneath the 10. What are we looking for? Let's go back to the beginning. We're looking for greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. But now, <coughs> you know, like I said, we didn't have to worry about turning the signs around. So we can still think of this as being greater than or equal to zero. What's greater than or equal to zero? Positive numbers or zeros. But definitely not negative. 
So you have a positive number here, which means the entire interval is going to be positive. And this entire interval will give you positive numbers. That's what it means to be positive. So this is what you're looking for, except the equals to means you're going to use a bracket. So your solution is going to be, I guess we should write it up here, solve, that means you're looking for the solution, negative infinity to negative one, bracket, unioned up with bracket eight, to infinity. Now look at this, look at this answer. Look at this answer. And I didn't write the, ah, I need to get rid of that page too, it's a waste. Um, and our answer, we did the same problem three ways. We better get the same answer. OK, this has been a video of victory. It's been long. But if you watch the whole thing, you'll learn a lot. See ya. Bye bye.